Gareth, healthcare significantly outperformed in 2022. So why has it lagged the broader equity markets so far this year? If I take you back to last year, um, if you recall, there was there were fears over, well, essentially stagflation, so slowing economic growth but elevated inflation. And the key word in that sort of reflection is growth. Economic growth is the healthcare sector reacts to. Uh, investors invest in different spaces depending where we are in the cycle. So if you break down an economic cycle into sort of four quadrants, you've got early stage, mid stage, late stage, and slow down slash potential recession. So healthcare works better in the last two, and sort of early mid stage, um, it tends to be more of a source of funds on a sort of big picture basis. So this year, what's been remarkable, if you if you th- if you dial back to Coming into the year, you had everyone being bearish, calling for a recession, when, when in fact the year started with very strong performance from cyclicals and um, areas like healthcare being a source of funds. Really, the strength uh, of economic growth, particularly in the US, has led to the underperformance. Um, I think, you know, where we are now, um, you know, what's going to happen to that growth? And that, you know, you could argue anecdotally that potentially things are changing and that should be supportive for healthcare. So what's your outlook for the next 12 months then, which wonderfully includes another potential Biden-Trump US election? Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting times. And normally people get nervous on healthcare uh, into an election. Um, I'm actually really constructive on the sector here for the next 12 months, sort of almost, I guess, contrarian against that backdrop. so there's a number of reasons for this. Firstly, you know, uh, continuing from sort of why healthcare has lagged, you know, recent economic hard data is still strong, but I think anecdotally things are softening. And if that's proven to be the case in the data over the next few weeks, months, you know, that'll be very supportive for flows into healthcare. Healthcare is very out of favour, valuation attractive. Uh, if you look at ETF flows, which I personally think are the best barometer for market timing, they're flashing a really strong sort of green signal buy for healthcare. So put that all together. Um, I think, you know, ignoring things such as the US election, the outlook's very positive. For the election this time, I don't, I don't expect healthcare to be a major discussion point. There'll be a bit of noise, but um, last year, um, a new act was signed into law, the Inflation Reduction Act. There was a big piece of healthcare legislation in that. Um, we've gone past that now. Typically, you don't get a major new focus on new legislation or significant policy change after you've had a new act signed into law. So our outlook in terms of political risk is actually quite constructive for the sector. So I think the main thing is really what happens with um, economic growth. Outlook. That will you know, surpass anything else. And with the way we're seeing the world, we think the setup for healthcare is very attractive. So looking at the sector itself, what are the fundamentals driving your optimism? Yeah, so we obviously see a dislocation between uh, what the sector's done in terms of returns year to date and the fundamental story. Um, so, you know, we're aware it's lagged and it looks very attractive on stock market kind of parameters. If we just step aside and look at fundamentals, you know, things look very positive if I think of the sector versus how long I've been investing in the space, it's in really good shape. So utilisation is really strong and we expect it to remain so uh, for the next two to three years. We had the pandemic, um, there was a real kind of slowdown in healthcare utilisation during the pandemic. You know, obviously the focus was on dealing with COVID. So you've got the sector coming back to trend on utilisation plus a backlog, which in the, you know, in the UK, we're all aware of millions of procedures that are sitting in the backlog, if you like. So there's a strong growth outlook there, so that's very constructive for the sector. Um, the second is product cycles. So 80% of our universe is product companies. What drives the performance of stocks in, uh, with product companies is new product cycles. That's what gets investors excited. That's what drives top line growth, margin expansion, and with that, stock returns. And you know, we've got plenty of opportunities as we look out on that basis. The 
The most powerful one that investors are really excited about is around the, the obesity story and use of GLP-1s. And then the third is, you know, the long-term theme of consolidation. Healthcare is the most fragmented industry um, out there. Um, we see the opportunity for significant consolidation as uh, companies aim to become more efficient. Um, there's particularly a very strong argument for a sort of cyclical uptick in M&A with large mega cap pharma and biotech buying small mid-size pharma and biotech due to the need for new products with a particularly challenging period 2025 to 2030 with a number of pharma biotech products losing patent protection. So there's a really strong argument for an uptick there. So it's three fundamental drivers that we think are really powerful. And in that, you mentioned the, the story of the moment, you know, GLP-1s, yeah. a number of companies uh, and their, their respective drug developments. Where do you think that story might go from here? Um, so there's huge excitement. I would, I would argue it's kind of gone too far, shorter term. Um, so you've seen the companies that are the winners in uh, the, with these obesity products, uh, GLP-1s, um, have done extremely well. So anything in healthcare, company-wise, that is deemed to have a product or service that has done better because obesity is obviously an issue and it's driven conditions, diseases. So sleep apnea, diabetes, um, eye, uh, ophthalmology, osteoarthritis, uh, hips and knee replacement as part of that. Any companies that do anything like that have seen their share prices hit extremely hard. Um, and then that's extended out of healthcare into food companies. Uh, these GLP-1s are supposed to impact the amount of food eaten, the type of food eaten. Uh, they're supposed to lower desire for drinking, smoking, gambling. So companies in any of those areas have been hit really hard. So we think it's become uh, a little extreme in terms of sort of the excitement around the area. Uh, there's a medical meeting coming up this month um, which will reveal data from a study run by Novo Nordisk called the SELECT study which really catalyzed extra assignment. Um, there was an, out, uh, an outcome study, 20% benefit to the GLP-1 that Novo uh, produces. So there's been hype building into this event. We think it'll be really important and powerful but you know we expect some moderation in the excitement, but ultimately, you know, it's one of the biggest end markets, if not the biggest I've ever seen in healthcare. So, rough estimate 650 million people that would be considered obese that could benefit from these drugs. And so, you know, the, the market potential is significant, but the initial phase and excitement, you know, which has led to, you know, huge gains in, in some stocks, uh, it tends not to be sort of the next stage tends not to be as simple. So it will be complex, but I still think it's a really exciting story. And, you know, for healthcare, when you're investing in the space, that's what you need, product cycles. That's what drives out performance. So um, it's really important to have that story as part of the industry or sector. Lovely, Gareth. Thank you very much.